This is Dr. David Herzog, clinical psychologist and yoga teacher for the Technology of You to speak with you about hegemony. Webster's definition for hegemony. A preponderance This is Dr. David Herzog, clinical psychologist and yoga teacher for the technology of you to talk about hegemony. Webster's definition for hegemony, preponderant influence or authority over others domination. The social, cultural, ideological, or economic influence exerted by a dominant group. Does any of this sound familiar? <laughs> right now, we're seeing it clearly, even more clearly, because there are no distractions to keep us from seeing it. It's in our face. And something needs to change. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people are showing up and protesting the system of hegemony. Anytime there is a threat to hegemony, the ones in authority do what they can to keep those that challenge it down. And you saw that. You've seen that more recently with the response to the riots. Actually, they were protests and became riots. And there are many reasons for that. Some of what led to those riots was the police and how they treated those that were protesting, which then led to the riots. Violence begets violence. But what did the focus go on? The focus was on the damage, the physical damage to the cars, the stores and the focus was on the looting on the destruction of property what about the swath of destruction that hegemony bias, racism, <laughs> institutionalized racism has done to the human beings of minority status in the history of our country. So 
So perhaps we need to think about doing the opposite of hegemony. The opposite, the antonym of hegemony is self-government. If we are governing ourselves, we are, there's no need for this hierarchical system of power and control. We take responsibility. We take back our power to self-govern. And in that self-governance, we are connecting with others who are also governing themselves to create an inclusive community. And self-governing means we are really living in our truth, trusting ourselves and not living in fear. When you live in fear, you give away your power and the authority, the hegemony uses it to keep you down, to shut you up especially if you are challenging it. You become a threat, so shut it down. Just like all of those voters that helped put Barack Obama in the White House. Hegemony was threatened. So hegemony took action to make it very, very difficult for people of color, people of color that had lesser means because the hegemony kept them from having the resources, the education, the support they needed, it kept them or made it very difficult for them to vote in the subsequent election. The election that resulted in our current president. They made it very difficult for them to get voter ID cards. Even if they had ID cards that were issued by government public housing. That wasn't sufficient. So what did they do? They closed down DMVs in the poorer counties where some of these minorities lived. So they had to go to another county to get a driver's license or an official ID card from the DMV. How are they going to get there? They certainly can't drive there. They don't have a driver's license. They may not have a car and the public transportation in those areas where those new voters who came out and voted for Obama was very poor. So the likelihood that they're going to be able to get that necessary ID to be able to vote was nearly impossible. 
And so guess what happened? By an incredibly narrow margin, we have our current president. And as a consequence of our current president, we have a nation in chaos. So perhaps moving forward as we move into the new age and the new world that must be for us to continue as a species to continue as a country is to affect real change and doing that involves self-government, governing yourself, believing in yourself, trusting yourself, speaking your truth, not giving away your power, not living in fear, but being fierce. And when you are coming from a place of trusting your gut, listening to your heart, you will never go wrong. Because being connected to your gut, being connected to your heart, you receive information you're totally in the present. Pleasant from a place of love. <laughs> Pleasant from a connection to your instincts. And with the connection, these are information centers. Neurons in here, neurons in here, these are brains. With connection to these two brains and this brain, all of them working together, all connected by the vagal nerve, then you do right action. There's no other choice. We do not need this government. We need self-governance. So, the invitation is, listen to your heart, listen to your gut, and Govern yourself with the technology of you.